let's talk a little bit about the position rule in CSS. So let's just quickly Google uh, positioning W3 CSS. And here it is, CSS position property, the second one down. And we're gonna scroll down a little bit. And these are what I'm concerned with right now. Static, which is actually the default. It's what already comes on the element. You have relative, absolute, or fixed. Now let's see how all three of these interact with other elements on the page. So I've written up this page really quickly. Save it, we'll refresh. All right, so this is what we have here. So we have an H2, we have a P tag as well. Now I have static, position static on the H2, so it's the default. I don't actually need to have this here, refresh it, and it just doesn't happen, right? Nothing changes. That's because it comes default with static, so you don't have to worry about that. The reason that you need to know about static is because some elements will come with absolute or relative already on there, and you can just override it with static. Let's find out what happens when we would do uh, absolute positioning. Let's also keep this away for now. Let's get rid of that. All right. So the H2 is now hovering on top of the P tag. Why is that? Well, absolute positioning positions an element where it currently is without any other element recognizing that it's actually there. Furthermore, you can actually move that around like we had before, so we can do top. 100 px and it'll push it down from the top 100 pixels so now it's over there we could do left 100 px save it and it moves over to the left so absolute positioning positions positions an element at a certain location that you decide but other elements do not actually recognize that it exists so when we save this refresh they overlap each other now let's change this to relative now it's gone back to static. The difference is with relative, you can still position it. Top 100px, left 100px. You go bottom and right as well. So right now they're overlapping, but the other element isn't moving away. And the reason is the other element thinks that it's right here. It is not aware that it's actually moved down. So that's the big difference. When you have position relative, other elements recognize that this element is right here, but when it's absolute, it has no idea that the element's there. All right, so you can position something absolutely. Maybe you want an arrow to hover over a certain, a certain picture or something like that. You could definitely use absolute or relative to get the job done. It just depends on what you're trying to do. Now, the last one I want to go over is the fixed property. And to show you that, I'm going to need a little bit more text. So let's add some more text. I'll save it in there. I'll refresh. We have a lot more text in there. Let's change this to fixed. I'll save it. Now fixed has the same properties that absolute has where it does not recognize, it's not recognized by other elements. But if I scroll down, it stays right here on the page. So a lot of people do this with their nav bars. I mean, we do it with our nav bars. You can go to our site and check out our site. And there it is. So you see our navbar scrolling with the page. So those are the three big ones you need to know. Uh, absolute, relative, and fixed positioning.